Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are and welcome to today's webinar Countdown to GDPR. Are you ready? Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. We have taken a screenshot of an example of attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right corner. You are listening and using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit the text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. I want to take a few minutes of your time and would like to introduce about TechWave before we move into the webinar. TechWave is trusted digital transformation partner. We are a pan-global company with 450 plus customers across all verticals. Regional Development Centers and Global Development Center gives us the ability to provide 24 bar 7 application management services to our clients. We are recognized in the industry as nimble and right-sized partners with over 1,200 global employees. We are now spread globally with strong presence in North America, Asia Pacific, Europe, Middle East and South Africa, helping more than 100 satisfied clients with our value added services. We have also been featured in a lot of magazines like Business Journals, Forbes, Inc. 500 and so on and so forth. Here is the overview of our services and solutions. We provide end-to-end -end services and solutions in analytics, cloud, digital, and IoT. To the core are our enterprise services backed by decades of ERP experience. ERP, ADMS, AMS, BPO. These are the services that keep the lights on and pave path for the digital transformation. In today's webinar, we will be presenting about general data protection regulation. How it will impact individuals and businesses and how to prepare for it. It will help you to prepare for the GDPR rules coming into force by May 2018 in a very short time. This webinar will help you to get GDPR ready now, quickly and efficiently identify and manage risks related to privacy and data protection both within individual projects and throughout the whole organization at an optimized cost. You will know about GDPR content assessment, full content analysis, basic GDPR cleanup and remediation. I would now like to introduce today's speaker. You will be hearing a presentation from Mr. Anil Kona, CEO of Vertical Discovery. Anil is an industry-renowned subject matter expert in e-discovery and computer forensics with 27 years of experience in providing technology-based solutions in the area of intelligence, forensics and fraud investigations to various clients across all the verticals. And I'm Priyanka Sanduri. I am Marketing Manager at TechWave and I will be moderating today's webinar. Now I would like to hand it over to today's speaker to introduce himself and get started with the webinar. Anil, over to you. Uh, thanks Priyanka. Um, hi everyone. My name is Anil Kona. I spent uh, more than 20 years in the uh, investigation forensic uh, field. Um, I started my career in the police department for 14 years, then switched to corporate, worked 15 more years in two big four companies, uh, worked across the global, understand um, various litigation related, privacy, data privacy, cyber security related investigations. Um, we are here uh, today to more discuss about the the upcoming GDPR and how um, along with the you know technology and the uh, data assessment that we can really assist our company's data production and get ready to adhere to the very stringent rules that now replaced various other rules of uh, UK and brought everything under uh, GDPR umbrella. Um, the, uh, I, I can explain uh, some of the top um, actions that we need to take care, as well as the highlights of the act 
that is going to be implemented uh, from May 2018. Um, the sufficient time is given by the uh, uh, regulatory authorities to get ready for the uh, implementation of this GDPR, uh, failing which uh, there is a huge penalties that we will discuss shortly. So any questions uh, during the presentations, please um, you know, stop me or you can write down those questions. We'll give uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, at the end of the presentations to go over it. Uh, to start as an introduction to the GDPR, um, this uh, next slide, please, uh, Priyanka. Yes. One of the major driver uh, the companies are today is thinking the severe penalties that is coming. Uh, the basis of it is uh, the various regulations previously, which are in force, but on all the senior regula regulatory authorities thinks that companies not taking very seriously about the uh, personal data, personal identification of the data, right? Uh, which we call it as PII. Any person identifiable by the information that companies is storing today. So the reason why we put this you know, 20 million euros or 4% of the global revenue of the company that shows the seriousness of the regulatory authorities. Any violation, you know, one of the grass penalties is this. So, so it is important for companies to understand now the regulators are very serious. They really wanted to protect. Um, they are giving a lot of empowerment for the users to make various requests to ask the companies to comply with, if not, and there are you know, serious penalties. So we need to understand really deep into what the various um, rules and regulations comes under this GDPR, driving this kind of heavy penalties. Uh, moving to the next. Um, all right. Uh, what is GDPR, right? General Data Protection Regulation requires um, all the organizations to, you know, whoever retaining the personal information of the EU citizens, either they are EU company or outside the EU company, if you are storing personally identifiable information of any your customer or a personal or an entity, then you are comes under GDPR. Um, as you can see, after more than three years of negotiations, general, uh, this GDPR has been agreed by the European Parliament and replaces various other rules so far, you know, especially including safe harbor certification and other rest of the regulations previously we have. So the lot of captive uh, centers that runs out of India or any part of Asia, which also manages the data of the UK, uh, EU citizenship, then the GDPR uh, applies on them, right? So when we, you know, that's the second point. What is it and who uh, it applies? The regulation applies to the, all the companies processing the personal data, either they are within the EU or outside the EU. When this is going to be, uh, you know, start from 25th May, once the, uh, the complaints start implemented, any breach, you have to respond within 72 hours. The reason the insufficient time is given for preparing uh, various aspects in this GDPR. The number one, you need to identify where is the PII and making sure you are protecting it properly. And at the same time, um, you are also responding it when some breaches are happening. So the, the authorities are expecting you to be prepared starting end of May, respond within the stipulated time if anything, any request coming from a customer or is there any breach within the stipulated time? Any violations, why we need to do is because of the severe penalties this time, um, the regulatory authorities are imposing on the, on the, on the companies. Um, going to the next, uh, Priyanka, can you move? Yeah. Uh, what is the code talking about, right? The couple of things I was talking about, the consent. So every individual um, for whom you are collecting the data, you should have a consent 
uh, you know, either by electronically or by physical, you should take that. So, you know, any information, if they request right to access, right, any information, any of the client asks how much information that includes uh, very sensitive information about um, not only the sensitive information about their identification like bank ac bank um, account information, credit card information, date of birth, address, um, the spouse names, anything that constitutes under PII. They can also ask what is the history that the company is keeping so far. The companies are storing, especially e-commerce companies are storing uh, what are all the information you accessed before? What are all the uh, your favorite list? What you browsed before, right? What is your likes and dislikes? So under the right of access, you have to provide all that information, not only the metadata, which is the PII, not only, it's not only that information. Even if you like someone and you say, hey, I like the product or I like this, uh, you know, person as as to be part of my group, if that is a social media, um, when the request is uh, in this right to access is requested, you have to share every information and allow them to download that information. And uh, another uh, highlight of under this GDPR is right to forgot. If any client or a customer request, okay, I don't want to be a part of your organization anymore or i would i don't want to be a, your customer anymore and you have to delete all the information pertaining to that individual including as i said um, before um, including their access and uh, you know what uh, websites they browsed previously what their likes and dislikes what is their preferences right not only the pii um the, another important uh, notification is, uh, you know, any data breach happens, you have to respond uh, within uh, within the short term, uh, which is 72 hours uh, from the from the time uh, any breach happened. Uh, so you need to be aware of what is, um, you know, total breach happened, what how many people affected and what is is any monetary benefit, uh, losses happen. So it is not only responding and saying, hey, by the way, sorry, we got a breach. You need to tell the authorities what is the length of um, and the breadth of the uh, breach happen. Um, this is really critical um, because, uh, you know, you really need to uh, have a full control on the data. You need to stay on top of it. Where is the data and how many servers are having the data? The moment some breach happened, you know what exactly and what is the impact. Uh, privacy by design, the data production should be designed to build and development as a new systems. Um, you know, you, you can't say, you know, your systems are not ready or some of your ERP systems are not ready to accept uh, some of the new challenges. So you have to uh, design the new applications or the ERP systems to update. Already SAP and Oracle, they started doing that part of the uh, piece, um, but it is not uh, you know, storing the data alone. So you need to go across your organizations to identify various various data coming under your you know, PII or, and, and comes under GDPR to understand exactly you know, what are all the new changes you need to adapt. Um, Another significant um, uh, change is um, the GDPR Act actually uh, pushes you to have a data production officer. Um, you need to draw various um, roles and responsibilities of the GPO who owns the data, sensitive data in the organization and able to respond to the regulatory authorities very quickly. It depends on the organizations, how much data they can, um, you know, how much data they are actually storing um, and depends on the the quantity how many data production officers is by region by product you need or one person can respond but there are number of roles and responsibilities that gdpr laid out for a data production officer along with uh, uh, cio and um, and coos uh, we can discuss more uh, in the next slides 
Um, the objects in profiling is also uh, taken a very uh, serious lead in this. Individuals have the right not to subject to profiling. Um, if you see, uh, you know, uh, familiar with Amazon buying, it keep coming, hey, the guys who are purchased this are already purchasing this. So you don't want to be part of that and you don't want it to companies to, you know, put you under that analytics to say, hey, by the way, you know, X is purchasing this. You can always request that so that they should remove all such activities and they can uh, they cannot show that profiling. Um, data portability is another challenging job. Individuals can require the provide to port the data to another provider. Um, it's not only the telecommunication which you're currently running. If if I'm an Amazon, I want to go to the eBay or a Flipkart, I can ask. Can I move the entire my search previous pro products that I purchased, my history, my information to the other? So which now uh, becoming a challenge uh, right now uh, for the competitors, um, and a lot of rules are under the uh, you know discussions. So the companies have enough sufficient time for redesign the their applications when such requests come, and how quickly they respond to such requests. Uh, this slide actually gives you over very few eight to nine points that we picked up, uh, which are very critical for majority of the uh, companies who manages the customer data, not only managing the uh, restricted sensitive information, but also uh, a lot of other uh, big data that we are creating nowadays to run analytics. So it's a combination for both how companies now need to handle this. Uh, going to the next slide. Uh, Priyanka, can you push? Yeah, thank you. Now, we are good. Um, now, so we need to really put people, process, and the systems in, in, in place because it is not only the technology right now, uh, it takes care of it. A uh, lot of people who interact, they, not only the call centers, but the HR and IT and you know various other organizations have access to this data and how they are accessing the data, how much is really encrypted while uh, they are sharing the data, and how much is really um, in a masked when they are seeing the data is also you know uh, drives a lot of the regulations under the GDPR. Um, Identifying the PI data from across the data sources, uh, what we need to do as a primary. Um, we are requesting every uh, customer or our clients to understand what is the data they are now currently holding, right? How much data they are holding, how much it is required for the business today. They need to understand how much data is really required um, to understand nowadays. Uh, before they start really plan having the um, data production officers or you know they respond if there is not necessary for the business they can actually erase such data so that the regulations is is not stringent on them or they are spending too much on the technology so we are advising clients nowadays to understand what is the data across their data sources where it is located how to classify that information to understand how much is required by for the business, how much is just you know as a FII you are collecting so that you can get it off. Once you have the data um, put in place, the mechanisms to you know provisions the DPR, then you can understand you know the scalability and how quickly you can retrieve and remediate those data when such requests coming from either to forget or somebody wants to download that data or any breach happens then you have a full control on what exactly which server and which part of the uh, your data sources are affected and what data is actually stored there um, you know that you need to do it with a you know very accurate um, information so you know the data should have a forensic um, you know the backup to if required to present in the court of law uh, data breaches, responses, and data forging. Understand the scope of the you know uh, incident to comply with the breach notifications. Purge and delete the data as and when it is requested, as well as you know any such breaches happening uh, under the company policies. So you need to 
it is not only the technology, as I said, it's, it has two pieces right now. You need to build your data policies. Um, you need to build your retention policies. You need to build your, um, you know, DPO and any other senior officers, their roles and responsibilities. Once you have the framework and the compliance related, all the metrics are updated, then you need to design your systems if they are not already, you know, in sync with, with what you are currently under the GDPR. And you need to redesign your, um, your technology and then reinforce with your people, train them, make them understand what is the GDPR and make them, uh, you know, um, compliant with the, with the regulations. So when they are dealing with the data, they are more, uh, you know, vigilant. Uh, moving to the next slide. Um, what we need to consider um, based these uh, challenges, a multitude of challenges are created because of this. Uh, you need to make the inventory of all the sensitive data as we discussed. Um, data assets containing sensitive personal information must be tagged. And um, this can be a training data. We, with my experience in last several um, months, working with the large corporations, what we are currently seeing is they always go to the ERP system or their customer CRM and say, hey, this is what my data, right? But technically, when we really scan through the number of servers and the laptops across the organization, 90% out of 100 are people are surprising. The amount of data is actually sitting in a different servers under HR or IT or you know some kind of a backups for some data pulled out for the training purposes, right? All the data, which you know uh, it may cause a serious implications in future. So it's very important for for companies right now to scan their entire uh, content management service servers wherever they are and tag them under appropriate uh, labels so that they can take appropriate action. Um, complete understanding of the uh, flow, mapping of the sensitive data, what is required, where to, um, you know, mask that data, right? How do you are storing? Is it, you know, required to show that kind of an information when the uh, personal uh, at the, either at the billing or the customer care responding? Is it what necessary information is, is revealing and how we are, um, you know, evaluating that, against the customer information and then storing it back. So mapping that sensitive inside and outside the organizations, including third parties, right? When you um, say, for example, like Amazon, right? Um, they have a third parties to deliver the goods. So they have your information, they have your um, address. They know what you purchased from last six to uh, 12 months, which is again, constitute under GDPR as a PII and uh, customers has a right to ask to forget that. So it is not only the data at your end you are forgetting. You are asking the third parties also to delete such information, and you are responsible till the last mile. So which is important. Uh, another critical point is uh, data protection risks, categorizing the systems and business processes to understand you know which organization or business owners required what information. Right um, nowadays, the storages are cheap and which are in the cloud. Many people act, request for the access. Um, the entire segregation of duties and um, approval process to get access to this data, um, which actually uh, may really related to the insider threats. Right, um, the people who don't require the access are also asking and getting the access. They may misuse what recently happened with the Facebook and the um, and the analytics company that the data was shared is one of the, the, the top examples. Um, the response uh, from the CEO saying, hey, we have a hundred billion records and it is hard to manage an employee taking some of that and um, sharing with someone else is uncontrollable, is not the right answer anymore because the same rules are also going to apply in the US very soon. Senators are working very hard to get that very quick um, implemented in across the US. So that itself now 
causes a serious concern and people like facebook and uh, and the giants of those companies are also now redesigning the entire their technology how the data production risks are categorized and tagged so that they can protect them um the complete understanding of the access rights the when personal asks the data what is his access rights right what data you are providing um what you can actually say no uh, under the gdpr people need to really go through it that's one of the responsibility of the uh, data production officer to understand when such requests come how do you respond back uh, understand those access rights um companies has to establish proper protocols to supply such information uh, during the incident management happen or any such request coming from the uh, common uh, customer uh, for access rights or asking to uh, forget about um, his his information uh, we need to set up those protocols because any time regulatory requirements request for such information you are able to provide more pull proof information that this information is already provided or deleted behind recoverable um, uh, any means uh, conducting training and awareness is which is very important as always in most of these trainings we keep saying the tone of the top they should come very very strong on these um, that's one of the reasons why we are starting these presentations with the penalties so the ceo of the group or the audit and audit committee understands the seriousness of the regulators and they you know assume that responsibility of communicating an awareness uh, really to the down who really handles the data um establishing an ongoing monitoring is very important it is not one time job um uh, as long as the companies are involved in gathering um uh, customer client information they need to uh, build a continuous monitoring tools so that we are they are comp comply with the not only the gdpr when such requests comes they respond back in time and uh, and able to you know avoid any penalties um periodical checks is very important um because you know scanning such huge number of data is highly um, not possible or controlling the process and the people sometimes is a challenging so one of the other advice that we are making companies even though you have the all the policies and procedures in place and you have the technology in place um a periodical check to make sure those things are really working where you need to do a fine tune uh, which is very important so that when you do a fine tune of these regulatory uh, fine tune of this data and making sure the personally identifiable information is protected then you know where the you know is there any leakages happening both inside and outside um that's the you know the, some of the challenges and the advices that we are giving uh moving to the next um we uh as um, what we can also offer uh to the to to our clients today um we can um identify analyze and remediate and protect this information for you um we have a you know uh, multiple uh, layers of uh, planning is required uh, to create a fully capable information it is not only the technology as i keep mentioning we need to look at your legal compliance requirements where is your data so identifying such high risk data analyzing it and then making it into categorization before we you know get into the remediate and then we identify your crown jewelers of the data how to protect that jewel there is another task uh, while we doing visibility um, into terabytes of data the speed and scale and the confidence that we can gain it to the regulatory is more important so we are partner with the um, in the top of the technology people in the industry and uh, we are building a complete end to end solution um moving to the next right how can we help so our technology um our methodology including leveraging advanced technology industry standards to process categorization of this by using 
uh, top of the state of the art technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning helps keep identifying the personal identification information even though if we miss um, you know by tagging uh, the uh, the manually so such such uh, advanced technologies keep an eye on tagging the large uh, amount of data across your organization to employ um, very you know timely tested approach bringing together the cutting edge uh, technologies will help you know the conduct a risk assessment to start with and once we have that risk assessment you we we provide a bottoms up data inventory that classifies the document into various buckets then you know that helps you to um, to do two things once you have the classification you can assign the business owners for each of those classification and you know we can really uh, go through the deeper deep dive into that session to understand is really the business requires such um, data management or you know is there anything that we can remediate at that point when you are remediating also you know the technology helps and remediating behind behind the overall the controls so that you are not that the data is not recoverable and anytime uh, any breach happened you will be safe that the de it's, data is not available anymore for that particular person or an entity um, and when the classification happens we can also provide the training and support um, not only with the personal or the business we can also train our machine learning to understand what exactly the classification is happening uh, and then we can move move forward uh, we can all we are offering this as a SaaS model or we can actually bring uh, hardware based on the sensitivity of our clients data uh, we can help them either way um, moving to the next we can go a little deeper onto the uh, to the technology piece um, a solution actually comprises of all the three things uh, we need to understand the introductions to the new requirements the challenging organizations require um, you know what what top compliances you should be focusing on uh, starting from may once you understand what kind of data you are holding what compliance is required what is each user's responsibility then you can actually move the technology to the appropriate slots so that the the data is classified protected and analyzed and then given appropriate actions to the people um, every individual listed here is the top responsible person as i said security is everyone's responsibility uh, we can't deny that but um, who when you really wanted to uh, you know tag someone the data privacy officer and chief risk officer are the two guys um, are, are uh, responsible for the complete uh, GDPR responsibility. And COO, CIO, and CSOs are helping them how uh, you know, uh, reclassify some of the rules and responsibilities that DPO can have it and then manage it by, by, the, by the GDPR. So, um, you to, you uh, every company should have one DPO to respond to the uh, both customer and client requests as well as the regulatory request. Um, moving to the technology piece, uh, which actually consists uh, plays a major role. Um, the next slide, um, as yeah, next slide please. Priyanka, next slide. Yeah, thanks. So the NUX is one of the you know, world's top um, content analyzer um, uh, today. Uh, it is very scalable, uh, very, uh, you know, it can read the data with a very high speed. So it can identify the data. Uh, it's scanned through, you know, uh, various files. Um, either they can be a Microsoft Office, or a MacBook related files or any other computer uh, electronically stored information. Um, the format and the uh, the size of the file is not a uh, any issue for NUX. Um, it actually reads the data from the binary to understand the patterns. Um, you can classify the patterns of 
uh, various PII, uh, like PAN card, um, you know, your social security card, the tax IDs and the, the credit card information, the account information that actually, um, you know, NUIX can analyze through the data once we identify, goes through it, tag them, um, you know, with some additional information that is required when you make them, you know, classification. Uh, classification is a very important stage, as I keep mentioning in my club club slides. Sorry. Um, once you classify the information based on the tags that data, uh, you know, created, then all the business owners and the and the framework of your compliance and the DPO's main role to understand and sign off on this classification. Once the, it is classified, we can remediate and the data can be protected. And as you can see, it's a continuous cycle. Uh, it's not one time job. If you are, if you are not, if you are in the business to collect, um, you know, uh, clients or customers' data continuously. So then you need to have a continuous monitoring to do this identification, analysis, and classification, remediate and protect to refine your uh, data protection uh, uh, policies as well as the data so that you are uh, fencing the right data rather than you are trying to fence the entire organization which is uh, out of control. So if you know where is your crowns um, jewelry, then you can really protect the data. Then if any breaches happen, then you know exactly what happened, where it is happening. And it, it allows you also to you know double fence it so that you protect better um, the crowns rather than just uh, protecting the entire garbage. Um, moving to the next, we are also um, you know focusing uh, various case studies that we can uh, discuss. Uh, we can do a you know a very quick content assessment. Um, you know any shared drive, any home directory or a SharePoint, um, anything like that. Uh, to, to get a sense for uh, our clients and customers, how much uh, personally identifiable information they are actually holding it. Um, and then we can create a complete um, you know, visualization dashboard that helps them slice and dice the data to really deep dive into what kind of data they are holding it. And they can also you know, list up responsive data to uh, you, you can rank them based on you know the data you have or the file types that that information is actually capturing right uh, a lot of times you um, the companies as a standard practice they just dump the data in excel sheets sharing that excel sheets and then sometimes they are lying in your your inbox they are part of your download you know uh, some local laptops and then it's in the structure what is the benefit of doing this in a very quick assessment um, clients will understand what is the private data exists in their in their environment, what applications are hosted. So when this NUIX really scan, it scans through each and every file, either it is a database or an application, or is an unstructured data, it doesn't matter. Any electronically stored information, it has the capability to just scan through it. And then, you know, you client will really understand where exactly the PII is sitting and then able to consolidate it, that data into you know, one single location and then reclassify, classify what we discussed before. So one of this a quick con content assessment really help clients to you know, get an eye opener for them, how much data they are actually holding today and what needs to be done. If client is a little more um, um, you know, structured, we can do uh, a next level of assessment. Priyanka, can you move to the next, please? Yep. All right, then if the client is really um, more structured, we can then do a fully full content analysis across their you know, organization. A very comprehensive index can be built um, you know, then we can prioritize the risk content, analyze the impact, uh, and how much data they are holding today. 
um, this complete analysis of end-to-end -end every uh, possible data across the organization, whether it's a SharePoint, Exchange Server, or you know, home drives, laptops, or even including your mobile phones, helps organization wide mapping the risk, right? Uh, if if anybody is having a data controlled applications that at the point of sale, you can also include that in the analysis. So we know how much data is actually stored in the point of sale that either delivering it to the client or accessing from the, from the client. So this, this holistic view of complete analysis helps client to understand how to map the data well. We can also identify the user and owner of the data. Um, again, with the uh, complete visualization, we can validate whether each of the business requirements or the business owners really need such data. So you can uh, understand some of the issues from the root cause um, that that analysis will result really, you know, reclassify entire your data based on not only on the risk on the PII, you can also think um, if you get a request from a client uh, or a customer for any of the access rights or the forget where where all the devices are actually storing the information and how you can connect them with a single click of a button, you can rest assured that the data is permanently deleted uh, behind, behind recoverable so that you can go back to the client and thereby to the regulator to tell them, you know, you are complying with the request. So it is very important to not only map the data, but also map the devices across your, your organization. So the fully content analysis that helps, you know, to understand the, you know, uh, the complete gamut of your work and, um, you know, what actions you need to take. Um, if client is, you know, a little more matured, then we have uh, uh, the next level that we can go. Priyanka, can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So we can have a complete, you know, clean up and remediation, get a basic GDPR in place, because we know now your clients are matured enough, you have uh, various, um, you know, checks and balances are already in place, then we can validate those checks and balances against the GDPR, and we can see what we can clean up and remediate very quickly. So you can ha raise your hand and say, hey, you are comply with the data well before May 2018. So a full that, uh, you know, this is, the scope contains the full content indexing, creating, and running the 90, eight various issues that laid out under the GDPR, we can actually run them to, you know, and ta tag those documents to, for the cleanup or classification. Um, overall deliverable, you know, it's it, you have the complete risk report uh, ready on your hand, um, you know, and this also um, have a lot of IT related help reducing the storage and the audit report and, you know, you, you, you are more confident in uh, running it. Uh, not only all the previous benefits you get, you can also have the defensible deposition today. Uh, could I go to the client or you are ready to accept any such request coming from the uh, clients for the access rights or the, you know, forgot, forgot me or ask for anything, right? This also helps you to, uh, as we discussed previously, double fencing your data so that your risks are mitigated. Even if, you know, by God, uh, touch base, nothing should happen. But even in that case of breach, you are quickly uh, able to respond within the uh, stipulated time frame and, um, you know, able to give the exact high accurate reports. This single workflow will, will give you, um, you know, full end-to-end -end control. Uh, that's one thing that we can do. Uh, we can also help you, uh, what's the next slide, please? Yeah, we can also build a workflow for you. Um, it, that gives you a constant watch and uh, results so that your DPO has fully equipped 
ready to respond to any of the questions or the requests coming in. So there, there is a continuous assessment is happening, a review of results are happening, um, a complete case management was built. You know what is the end result of each of the case that resulted into it. Based on the results and the nature of requests coming, you can measure your compliance related work and you can change or update some of the technology, people process and training based on that. And then you can plan for the remediation. So it's a continuous monitoring workflow that we already built and uh, successfully uh, implemented in many organizations today that helps you know uh, stay ahead of the curve and ready to respond. Um, that's 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 all I think we have today. Um, I'll I know I said I'll give a um, couple of minutes for questions. Uh, I quickly you know summarize uh, that. So GDPR is um, is is going to implement from 25th May 2018. The pen penalties is very high. That shows the regulatories are very very serious this time, and making sure the companies our global revenues are hitting so that the companies need to be respond very quick. Um, there is a two angles to it. One is a functional where you need to have your DPO, CIO and CSOs get ready, uh, refine your, design your uh, pri uh, privacy uh, policies, frameworks, and, um, and understand the roles and responsibilities, and then uh, design your technology and train your people and process to that. So, you know, people, we have a very short time uh, left. If any companies are not respond so far, it's time to go get ready. Any questions, I'm happy to take. Yeah. Thanks, Anil. Uh, we are now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit the questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Uh, Anil, uh, we received a couple of questions. I'm gonna uh, attend those now. So yes. moving on to the first question is that, how fast or how much time needed to achieve GDPR compliances in time for the deadline? As I said, we have very uh, robust plans uh, and the technology is already in place, so we can really help you very quick. Um, however, it is also depend on uh, how much the maturity of the data at the client location, but as a process and policy, um, we did uh, multiple uh, implementations already across the globe. So we understand uh, the GDPR compliance, the both on the uh, non-technical and technical aspects. So we can really respond very quickly. Um, but definitely it depends more on you know, how much um, the client is ready. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks, Anil. And moving to the next question is that, does the GDPR only applies to EU organization? Uh, no, it applies to any company organization that holds the PII of a EU citizen. So if you have a captive center in India and uh, or providing some services and uh, you know you you are not a EU organization but you are working with some of the EU organizations to hold the data then you are also uh, comes under the GDPR. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see there is uh, a question from Venugo Paul. Um, what is the yes, initial yes. investment burden on the corporations? Um, Correct. The some of the steps that we request we we just mentioned uh, to manage the cost. We are suggesting client to do a quick assessment uh, just to understand what kind of data they have and what is the request that we can run it from SaaS for a very very low cost um, before they spending a lot of money on hiring the DPO or redesigning their privacy laws, they can they can check how much PII they are storing, uh, whether it is required for their business, um, you know, what is the future plans, based on that they can really plan that. Yeah, uh, other question we received from Muti Madali, that is a lot of companies are aware of GDPR, but 
are they ready as we are few weeks away correct uh, what we are seeing uh, companies who are uh, aware of pii and uh, and uh, handling the data uh, previously they are very you know ahead of the curve uh, we are seeing you know along with uh, with number of companies that we are working today uh, recently we went to an rfp for one of the global organization there are like uh, 200 uh, you know uh, various uh, client client um, personals across the globe uh, submitted the questions in the in the rfp asking various questions so it is not only the client at the eu across the globe people are understanding because they are accessing the data at the same time we also see you know the number of competitors in the market uh, trying to help so it's it's a it's a you know people who are not uh, very familiar handling the data they are not moving very quickly but people who are um, already have a breach before um, spend enough money they lost money because of the regulatory penalties they know and they are moving quickly Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving to the next question. Uh, what are the rules under the GDPR for subject access request? So subject access request, you know, uh, uh, predominantly, as I said, uh, not only the PII about my information, my accounts information, my name, my date of birth and other information. They also should give the access to um, all kind of, you know, what data I've, I've browsed through, what I tagged what I liked, what I shared, what I intended to buy, everything I have to provide. So um, the, 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 the rules and regulations are very deeper around what that access data you should provide and should be able to download both from your, your um, uh, technology service as well as the third party. So it's, it's, it's deeper. Okay, okay. I uh, received another, another question from Mr. Venkat. His question is that what are the simple steps used to detect such a data breath, breach? Um, it's nowadays the attacks are a lot sophisticated. A um, couple of years back, as you know, um, the the attack happened on Sony um, pictures by the North Korean. They, they are mm -hmm. sitting in the servers for 750 days, right? 750 days is almost two years. So it's uh, the attacks are so sophisticated nowadays. The average time that an attacker sitting in your server without your knowledge is 250 days now. So it's it's um, it's it's difficult to identify. There is no simple steps to identify the data breach, but it is you have a simple steps to protect it and uh, and uh, you know uh, encrypt it beforehand so that if the even there is a data breach happen and the data, you are not losing the data. Okay, okay, thank uh, you. I see another oh, I think, question, uh, is how secure is NUX? NUX is highly NUX, secure. Yes, highly um, secure is NUX, yeah. It is not uh, taking the data, it is only keeping the data wherever uh, in the client's server. It is not touching anything. Mm -hmm. It is only scanning through it and identifying and tagging which file has which information. So technically, NUX is not not making any copy of the data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I think we are uh, running out of time today. Uh, your audience can still uh, pose their questions. Uh, you know, uh, we can we can actually help help you with the email and stuff. So uh, I think we are we came to an end to end for this uh, webinar. So thank you, Anil. Uh, the thank session was much. very informative. Thanks for joining. Thank you, program. everyone. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, thanks, everyone, for attending today's webinar. If you have any other questions, please contact our team anytime. Contact details are displayed on the screen here. Once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a link to view a recording of today's webinar within 24 to 48 hours. On behalf of TechWave and our presenter, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Anil. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.